Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and I'm so excited for today's video. I cannot believe that the day has finally come. I feel like when they started teasing this palette online, I would just never get to hold it in my hands. The new nude Huda Beauty palette. I, you guys, it is not like, okay, if I had to pick a color scheme that I gener like generally gravitate more towards, it's more like the orangey, coppery, like the, those fall type colors. I don't know what all of this is, but it's definitely more that spectrum. I love like pinky, mauvey, purpley type tones. Absolutely, I think they're beautiful, but I always, as my go-to quick moment, I always go the other way. When I saw this palette that it was going to be released, this was like, the, my first thought was, holy hell, that's my new daily palette. I don't know what it is about the arrangement of like mauvey pink tones in here that just make me want to like, like just huh. Like I'm, I'm obsessed, I'm excited, I cannot wait to dive into it. Now I will be taking all of my info for this little guy right here off of the Huda Beauty website because that's where I purchased it. Now it does retail for $65. There are 18 pans, but 17 shades. One of them right here is a concealer shade and it does go through and I'm not gonna read all of this because I feel like this palette has been reviewed a ton at this point, but basically what you need to know is that there are four different textures in this palette. There are their matte eyeshadows, which are formulated with aloe vera and coconut oil, four reflective shades featuring shimmering pearl flex for a gorgeous duochrome finish, two glitter formulas, which are infused with innovative silicones for advanced adherence, pigment dispersion and luminosity, and then one pressed pearl combined with acai, jojoba, and sunflower wax for a high shimmer finish that layers effortlessly on top of mattes, adding a dreamy depth and dimension. One concealer base, of course, for flawless application to boost eyeshadow. I love that I just said I wasn't going to read that and then I read it. But here's my thing. I really wanted to dive into that part specifically because I feel like the first thing people are really kind of attacking or saying or having an opinion on with this palette is that they don't, and I don't know if it's just like people aren't reading the description or what the what is going on there because if memory serves, yeah, it's actually on the back of the palette as well right here. Um, you, it, they do kind of tell you what the situation is. Like, this is why there's so many textures. This is why this palette looks different. They really put a lot of thought and effort and emphasize to tell you what is a little different. And everything that I've drawn from this palette so far, just in swatches and the little bit that I've gotten to play with it, they really wanted this to be like a nice, all-inclusive, mauvey pink tone palette. They have some warmer tones, some cooler tones, lighter tones, deeper tones, different types of reflection that's going to happen on your lid. So different types of like glimmer and shimmer and movement that's going to happen effortlessly without you doing anything other than applying it to your lid, which I think is really cool. Um, my first question and or thought, I'm not, I do not personally, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, I hate it when any brand, don't care who you are, don't care what the base is, I hate having a base like this in a palette that you cannot cover because all that's going to happen is any of these shadows surrounding this, I'm going to use, touch them, swatch them, whatever, they're immediately going to go in there. That's why there's actually a big hole in it. I was trying to get a feel for the consistency and there was then like a giant flake of this glitter right here that kind of went down into it and I had to like literally dig it out. That was a little bit frustrating. Now let's go ahead and chit chat for just a second about this base because I did go ahead and like I said I primed and prepped, I think I said that, prime and prepped my lid. I put this down and then I did set it with my normal um, translucent powder. I do that all the time. You don't always have to set your base. I know I set mine just because my eyes will crease so quickly if I don't. They prefer a set base which is fine. If you're don't, that's fine too. You don't have to. It'll make your shadows look a lot more intense. Totally personal preference in my opinion. I used it. I don't have an issue with it other than, first of all, why is it this color? Like, how is this going to work? Because this is almost too dark for me, and I know that if you're a deeper skin tone, it's going to be too light. So my first question is, what, how, like, I don't know, because it's not like totally translucent. It is kind of. If you look at it like this and like you apply it to the back of your hand, like you can see a little chunk right there. But if you rub it out, it definitely becomes a little bit more translucent. But again, that's on my skin tone, which is super duper fair. So I'm inclined to wonder, like I'm obviously, I don't have deeper skin tone, but I don't know how that's going to look on a medium to deep skin tone. Now, once I move past that, my eye, as everybody's, immediately went to these like beautiful pearl reflect colors Oh my stink, these are stunning. Now, Huda Beauty also did release with this palette these little silicone applicatory situations. So that way you can lay down this without using, oh my God, isn't that so sexy? Oh my God. Because they wanted you to be able to use these colors with like a silicone type spatula. So I went and grabbed, haha. <laughs> 
these. And no, I did not grab my sponge tip applicator. The whole point in whatever it was that they released, that little uh, finger feeling type thing, they wanted you it to be the same feel as your finger without actually being your finger because a lot of people don't like using their finger to apply to their lid. I love it. Doesn't phase me at all. Um, but some people bother them, so they came out with those. I grabbed this BH Pro S1 little silicone paddle to see if this would work because these are only a couple of dollars and hell yes. Thank you. Good night. So I'm just going to take this real quick, dive into the shade. Let's go the shade Charmed and let's just kind of swizzle. Oh, wow. We got some fallout, but wow, we got a lot on our brush. Okay. I know you guys probably can't see that as well. Oh, see, that works really well. I mean, it's a little messy because I'm not good at life, but like that's the one I just did with the brush. So that actually worked really well. Okay. If this works on the eyelid, I see. Oh, wow. Look at, oh my God, you guys, I can like actually blend with this too. <gasps> Oh my God, like, hello. I just blended that swatch all over the place. This is my life. So if this works when we use it on the lid, which you bet your ass we're gonna use it on the lid. If it works, um, we will know we don't need to buy the really expensive ones from Huda because we can use these. And they come in two different sizes. This is S1 and then there's also S2, which is larger for larger surface area on your eyes. Hello, come out here, please. Oh yes, bitch. Oh my God, how freaking cute are those? Oh my goodness. Okay, these are precious. Hello, let's dip you in. What can I dip you in? Let's dip you in fantasy. I was able to get like kind of a swatch with that. I mean, it's like not as good as the little one. I don't know. We're gonna play around with both of these. So let's go ahead, let's zoom you guys in and let's get moving because I have done already a lot of talking. I'm gonna wipe these off and we're gonna get to moving and playing and grooving. Oh yeah. I'm so excited. I love this. I'm so excited. All right, guys, let's go ahead real quick before we get going on the eyes and let's start moving into some shade names, some swatches, all that good stuff because they are so beautiful. So in row one, we have Bear, Crave, Play, Fantasy, Love Bite, and Spanked. And then in row two, we have Lace, Daydream, Tickle, Excite, Infatuated, and Kinky. Ooh, wow. And then in the last row, when I take out the concealed shade, we have Secret, Tease, Raw, Charmed, and Teddy. Now, you guys, these swatched absolutely beautiful. I did make sure to go through and give you guys multiple angles, different panning shots, far away, up close. I wanted to make sure you had all the different ways that you could to get the dimension that these shadows offer. They are so freaking beautiful, and I really wanted to try and captivate that. And the other thing I wanted to touch on before I get started, these glitter shades, a lot of people have been talking about those and like, how are you supposed to use them, how this, how that. I personally would always use a glitter glue with these, like hands down, no questions asked, because I prefer using glitter glues. Even if it's a shimmer, I would rather use a glitter glue. I cannot spray a brush and apply a shimmer to my lids. It does not work. Girl, been there, done that. My lids hate it. So I always use glitter glue. Now these, I was really impressed. Like I'm going to grab the shade Excite, for example. I just dip my finger in there and it actually feels really nice and almost buttery. And when I go in and just swatch it, like there's nothing on my hand, it's not sticky, I didn't lay down a base, and I just swatch, I actually am able to get a really beautiful, nice reflecting swatch of this. Again, I would use a glitter glue with them. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump in to the rest of it and we can kind of just talk while we eyeshadow because I'm good with that. But God, aren't those like reflective as all hell? Come on, oh, come on glitter, yes. P.S. You guys, guess what else I'm busting into today? My Morphe Jaclyn Hill brush collection. I wanted to use this um, months ago and I put it, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I put it away so that way I would know where to find it and then I couldn't find it. I did one of those, like the most stereotypical idiot things you can possibly do. I put it where it belongs, like where the new stuff that I have to test out goes, put it in there and then I couldn't find it again. And I was like, I didn't put it there. I didn't put it there. And then I finally looked and I was like, are you kidding? So I am gonna be using this collection today for part of it at least. Um, it comes with this big, beautiful carry case as well as these brushes. Um, and I'm actually really excited myself to dive into this because I was, I love Love this brush set when she went through it. Um, I'm also, in case you're wondering while I get these like unwrapped, oh God, that's so loud. Yeah, I definitely took those out of the major plastic. That was ridiculously loud. So I'm gonna be using this array today for the most part. Again, I will piece in with my brushes as I need them, but I will tell you what brushes we are using and all of that good stuff. So I think I'm gonna grab JH35 to start. It's like a nice little fluffy one. And I'm gonna start off by dipping into the shade. Oh God, there's so many. Oh, like this palette gives me like 
I don't want to say anxiety because that sounds really weird, but it makes me so excited that I don't know which shade I want to pick. I am so excited. Okay, Paige, you just got to calm the hell down and think. I think I'm going to go in with Tickle first, which is this really super pretty pink shade right here. Yes. Now, while I'm doing this, we're going to talk. So this is, you can like speed this up if you want to. That's fine. Where's my mirror? <laughs> Anyways, you can speed it up, but I love to talk through these. That way it's kind of like we're doing our makeup together. That's kind of my thing. So, ooh, girl, we're getting pigment. Yeah. Um, so what was I going to say? Oh, so for those of you that are wondering, speaking of this Morphe Jaclyn Hill brush set, I will be picking up the brush set with James Charles, and I will also be picking up his palette, of course, because I love, like, I cannot tell you how much I love the concept that he came up with for the Un Unleash Your Inner Artist and having duplicates of in that brush set of, like, your favorite brushes. I think that that is probably the most brilliant marketing thing I have seen in such a long time. There is, like, when I first saw him do that, I was like, oh my god, the first person that gets it. Yes! And to put in there duplicates of, like, your favorite brushes or even brushes that work best for his eye shape or whatever, the concept in general is so freaking fantastic because we've all been there. Like, oh, this is... For me, it's usually, like, my, my Morphe, the Y16 and the Y19. I use those brushes all the time, and it's like, how great would it be if a set were to come with multiples of those in it? That's so good because you know sometimes when you're playing with color and stuff you don't want to have to switch in between now a palette like this you don't have to be quite so strict oh my god I freaking love this color oh my god I love this oh my god this is so good and I love this brush too hello this is fantastic um I think I'm gonna grab a deeper shade and start kind of going in like into the actual V but first I need to decide do I want this to be a halo type eye or do I want it to be like a, what's the word, <laughs> like a regular type eye. I feel like I should go halo because I've been doing a lot of like the regular design. Yeah, let's go halo. So I'll take some of this same brush and just kind of pack a little bit of it toward the inner corner and really kind of get after it. Now so far I'm not having any issues with my uh, with my concealer base, it's not working bad, which I'm kind of shocked. You guys, <laughs> the last time I used one of those concealer bases, mm, that was in the, that was so mature, that was in a palette. It was that Dior palette from the Dior Backstage Collection, and I freaking hated that thing. It felt so greasy and so nasty. Oh my God, it was it was crap. I hated that so much. This already is like 10 times better than that base shade ever was. But just, you know, FYI, not even close to the same thing. If you bought that palette, this one's actually working pretty good. So let's go ahead and take, I think I want to blend that out. Or do I want to, no, no, I just want to keep deepening it up. I'm going to grab Love Bite, which is like a deep purple. I'm going to do it on the same brush, I think, and see if I can use this to get like nice and tight right up in. Oh my God, that color. <gasps> Oh, that's a sexy color. Yes, love bite. I'm gonna, I'm coming for you. You are so damn cute. Like, oh my, what? I got asked a couple times too if I thought that this was similar to the Norvina palette. I really like. I can see the question because it's a lot of purples and stuff. But I feel like the colors in here and the shimmers and the different textures make this so different. Like, I don't know. It's like I don't want to say so different. It reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay, um, the Naked Cherry. Maybe I'll grab those and kind of hold the palettes up side by side for you guys by the end for the end of the video that way we can uh, kind of look at that because I feel like some of these tones are super similar but then I'm like also okay what tones and what palette are not similar at this point you know what I'm saying like hello they're all kind of the same I'm gonna grab the shade Bear on this JH30 brush right here and just blend out the edges of all of this real quick, like up into this area, kind of up in the brow bone, and just really diffuse it because you guys know I've gotta, everything has to be blended and diffused, otherwise I can't, I can't focus. So I need to, I need to blend. And I'm gonna throw in, actually, ooh, you know what would be pretty? I'm gonna grab a little bit of the light peachy shade Play and I'm gonna pop that right up here. You guys, I am so sorry. I didn't realize you were so far away. That's awful. But hey, look at where we're at. We didn't hardly do anything, so I, I apologize. Without my glasses on, sometimes I just, like, forget to look at my surroundings. It's Glasses wear is comment down below. You'll know what I mean. Like, sometimes we're just oblivious because we can't see anything anyways. But 
But now that you guys are zoomed in, I'm going to grab the JH37 right here, and I'm going to grab the shade Play, which is like a really, really light, pale, peachy kind of color. And I want to use that and really work on diffusing this line between this bright pink and my brow bone. And I feel like this color will be a really nice transition because I really, oh my God in heaven, you guys, is that color stunning or is it just me? Like, hello? Hello? Are you the most beautiful diffusing shade I've ever seen? I think so. Oh my gosh, I cannot. And I love it like how effortlessly that's mixing with tickle. I'm gonna add a little tickle to it, like dip into both and then kind of go in. Oh my gosh. All right, so in the interest of science, we all know how I would typically apply these. I would go in with my Too Faced glitter glue, I would put it on my finger, pat it on the lid, I would take the shimmer, pat it on, and we would call it a day, right? But for the purposes of this video, we want to kind of see how these work um, with and without brushes and that kind of thing. And I'm going, I'm going to do that on this eye on camera, and then when I go off of camera, I'll do it my normal way, and I'll kind of tell you guys the comparison when I come back on camera. So I think what I want to do, oh, but I also want to play with one of the glitters. Ugh, damn it. <sighs> back to the drawing board. See, here's my thing, guys. I think I can get away with using both one of the pearl shades and the glitter shade because, look, they kind of match, right? This is Charmed, which is one of those pearl shades, and then this is Infatuated, which is the glitter, and I think I can put those, like, on top of each other. Hey, let's take a little bit. So I'm just gonna, right here, I have a swatch of that pearl shade in Charmed. I'm gonna take some of the glitter and just pat it on top. Oh, oh my God, it's like magic. Look at that. I just, like, layered the two together right there. <gasps> oh my god. Because here's my theory, you guys. I will try everything on my hand before I put it on my lid because I can do endless things on my hand, but, like, I only have one lid and I don't want to mess it up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to look at my eye. Look, look how blended I am. Hello. I don't want to screw my life up. So where I'm going to go from here is, first things first, I want to take uh, the smaller little applicator. This is the BHS1 little silicone paddle, and I'm going to grab the shade Charm, which is that pearl shade, and I'm going to try it by itself with no glitter glue adhesive. Ooh, look at that paddle. It picks up some serious, like, situation. And I want to start trying to press that onto my lid just to see if it'll work and adhere, which it totally does. I'm definitely having some fallout situation, but that's okay. Oh my god, you guys! And then there's nothing on the backside, so I can just flip the little paddle over and kind of disperse it. I would totally normally use my finger for this, so this feels so crazy. But it's working, and it's working so nicely. I didn't, ha that was so easy. Oh my God, hello. Who says you need to buy Huda's little tool? This is so much cheaper and it's working so good. Does it look like it lost a little bit of the reflection though? Like just a little bit? I'm gonna go in with my finger and I'm just gonna pat the edges of this out. Dang, that's gorgeous. Now, I do feel like it did, like, lose a little bit of the shimmery reflectiveness of that shade, and I think it's just because I don't have down any sort of a base that brings that out. Like, with a glitter glue, for example, it really makes the color a lot more intense, a lot more po poppy, and I just think that that's what's happening here. Look at how effortlessly that just, like, blended into the crease by itself. Like, I literally just patted it in with my finger. That's so pretty. You guys, I am going to go in with a little bit of this glitter glue. This is the Too Faced glitter glue. I use it all the time, and I'm only grabbing it because I really want this shade to be, like, as intense as it can possibly be. Um, I really want to let it shine. So I'm grabbing some of this, just a tiny, tiny little bit, like a couple little minute dots on my finger, and I'm just going to pop it right over top of this right here. Boop, 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 boop. And then I'm going to go in with that same shade, the shade Charmed, on my finger. I'm just going to lightly apply it. Oh, wow. See, you automatically get a little bit more of that pearl coming through. Just a little bit. Oh, wow. That's pretty. You can definitely see a little bit of fallout, but that's not nearly as bad as what I thought it was going to be. That was, like, it applied really nicely with that paddle. That went really well. Okay, so now we're going to take a little bit more of this glitter glue, and we are going to pop it right back on our finger right here. I'm definitely going in with a little bit more this time, taking a little bit of that off, actually, right about there. And I'm just going to take in the dead center again, boop, 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 and I'm going to pack on a little bit of the infatuated glitter, which is this reflective sexy guy right here here and just kind of pop her on. That is such an elegant looking glitter. Like it's so beautiful and attractive and reflective, but it doesn't, it's not like overpowering or over glittery. I don't even know if that makes sense, but this is such a like 
regal glitter. Oh my god, it's so appropriate. I don't know. I feel like this is the type of glitter you could wear like to the club, go have fun with your friends, but you could also wear it to the office and not be too much. Okay, maybe maybe it'd be a little much for the office, but maybe not. I don't know. It depends on your office. My office, it's welcome. <laughs> now, still out of this kit, I'm going to go in with the JH40, or at least I'm going to try to. I don't know if this brush will work for what I want to do, but I'm going to go back in with the shade Love Bite, and I am going to apply this to the inner and the outer eye just to deepen them up. Oh my god, this color is so intense and beautiful because I was kind of looking at it there for a second and it just doesn't have a lot of dimension to it. And I really want to like make it a little bit more, I don't know, dimensionalized, a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more something. And I just kind of feel like adding just a little bit of this shade, creating a tiny little shadow effect might be just exactly what it needs to kind of, oh God, that's pretty. I'm going to do the same thing to the inner corner here. And yes, this brush is absolutely perfect for what I wanted to do. Like the shape just fits. This is so nice and it's so soft. There we go. Ooh. And then when I relax my eye because they're so hooded, you just get like this beautiful little veiling moment right there. <gasps> Ooh, I like that. I'm just going ahead real quick and removing that glitter fallout that I kicked up when I went in and deepened up the crease. Normally you would already have the crease as deep as you would want it before you do the other glitters and stuff in the center. So if you, you know, if you already have your foundation done and stuff like that, do not go back in like I did because you will create that fallout. But I kind of knew that was going to happen. So it's not a big deal. I'm just cleaning it up. That's why I like to do my foundation last. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Oh, okay. So now I want to take and I kind of want to play around with another color. See, this is what happens when I do these videos because I love playing with all the colors. <gasps> They're so good. I want to grab the shade Spanked and I'm taking this on the JH34 brush and I'm just going to run that right up in this area to create because now it's nice and deeper on the inner and outer V. So I want it to be a nice deep transition into the brow bone. Whereas before it was much lighter. We've already went through like two different eye looks. <laughs> like, like we could have stopped at any point and been fine. <laughs> so now I'm going to grab the JH41 brush. It's kind of like a fat, a flat, a fat. It's a flat packer brush and I'm going to grab that shade bare and I'm going to run this up near the brow bone just to kind of give me a nice little transition between the two. Now, if you do have medium to deep skin tone, you could go in and use this bare shade as like a matte highlighting shade. But for me, because I'm so fair skinned, it doesn't really work out um, just because it looks like it's the same color as my skin. It doesn't give me any added dimension, but I like using shades like this just to blend and buff like a seamless transition between my skin, my highlight, my brow bone, or whatever's going to be up in this region. But I love shades like this to just create that nice little blend. Wow, that's pretty. What daydream look like right in the center. See, this is what happens. I end up like layering glitters over things, over other things. I'm just taking daydream on my finger and like popping it right in the dead center <gasps> for just a little extra pop. And I know, yes, I'm layering this over a glitter. You guys, we're just playing. We're having fun. It's okay. Don't take life so serious. <laughs> It's all good. I did this in one video where somebody was like, you can't put up, and I was like, don't tell me I can't. You're not my real mom. I can do what I want. Like, in videos like this, we're just more or less playing around with different textures and color combinations, and like I said, we've already done probably two looks in this video. We could have stopped at any time, but it's not about that. It's not about the technicality. It's just about the fun. Look at how fun that damn eyelid looks. Ooh, girl, that is so pretty. I love that I put it over a glitter. <laughs> God. But it's so pretty and reflective and you can see like a little bit of that glimmer the the glitter kind of like peeking through and like Hello, hi, like just saying hey, what's up? That's gorgeous So I'm just gonna grab my Tom Ford little dual ended liner here And I'm gonna grab the larger side and I'm going to proceed to line my upper lash line. Oh I love that that little line. It's like so like, ooh, <laughs> like it's just a cute little wing, but it's still there. It's like, hi, I'm here, but I'm not here to like, I'm not here to fight. I'm just here to love. It's like a cute little, cute little wing. I like that wing. Okay, guys, I'm going to run ahead, do the rest of my face, and obviously this eye. I'm going to do it a little bit differently off of camera, and when I come back on, I want to talk about the differences, the feeling, and like all of that stuff. So I will be right back with the finished look. <laughs> 
Okay, you guys, I went ahead, I got the rest of my face on, I put my hair up in this cute little moment right here. I sometimes love, fun fact, doing my face like super full glam, super fun, intense moment, and then putting my hair up. Like, I love this look because I feel like it just like draws all the attention to the makeup and makes my face just go like, whoo, like really sharp down in front and like, I don't know, I love it. Um, I can also barely see it in the viewfinder and I can't find my glasses, so here's hoping we're in focus. Now, let's go ahead and chat. The first thing I wanna mention is that if you see this eye and it looks a little funny right here, my eye started watering so bad when I turned off the camera. I have no idea what happened. I don't know if powder got in it or whatever, but it just started going to town. So if it looks a little funny, that is why. But let's go ahead and run through all the stuff that's on my face. I told you guys, you can tell me in the comments if you don't like me to do this part on camera. Um, um, but there's some people that they're like, I don't want to read it in the description box. I'd rather you just tell me. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of start throwing it into the video. And it's also listed down below as well. So to start that list off, you guys, these are what I used like this combo today. And my skin is looking so good, which is yet again, another indication that I am no longer oily because holy crap. So I went ahead and I primed my face exclusively with the Too Faced Hangover RX primer. I have always loved this primer and I've never been able to like really, really wear, wear it because when you have oily skin, this is like meant more for normal to dry skin. And so it kind of fights it a little, but I used it today and it looks so fantastic. And then I set my face with the Hangover RX 3-in-1 setting spray. These two together, if you have normal to dry skin on that spectrum, these are just such a nice little like pairing moment. I love them so much. And then for foundation, I went in with the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This is in the shade Mont Blanc. I, Mont Blanc, what? <laughs> is it like a building block? No, this is in the shade Mont Blanc and I really love this foundation. I've been wearing it for the last couple of days. Yet again, less oil, and this foundation is looking so good. Effortlessly full coverage and just absolutely stunning. Um, for foundation or for concealer, not exciting. Just my Shape Tape in, I believe, Fair Porcelain, I want to say. Um, and then I used to set my under eye as well as my entire face. I used the Maybelline Fit Me Translucent Powder. This is the pressed powder, and this is in the shade 100, and this worked really well to set my entire face. One thing I am noticing that, noticing, wow, my sinuses are fun today. One thing I am noticing with this powder or with setting my face in general is that it is difficult for me. I can no longer set my entire face with a beauty sponge, which is so crazy because that's how I used to always set my face. I set my under eye with this, but it has to be a light amount of powder packed on. And then I have to set my entire face with a brush. And I used one of the brushes from this collection, actually the uh, JH03 brush. This is a great brush for really just like packing on and lightly pressing a thin veil of powder onto the skin. This was so good. Um, then after that, I actually used this entire little palette. This is the Hourglass, which one is this? The Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked. I did a full video on this palette, which I can link up here for you guys, but I used the bronzer blush, um, bronzer and blush rather, out of this palette, this whole bronzer right here, and then I combined these two blushes. And then for highlight, I was actually really excited. I hadn't had the chance to use this. This is the Ofra and Nikki Tutorials <laughs> In Glazed Donut, no. This is Ofra um, and Nikki Tutorials. They came out with Pillow Talk, which was like that white to pink like reflect. And I thought my face had like all this beautiful pink going on that I would try out this highlight. And then I put a little bit of the gla Glazed Donut over top to brighten it back up. Oh my stink, you guys. This is stunning. I had never used it before. Loved it. Um, and then what else? Oh, my um, Lily Lashes in the, these are the Faux Mink Miamis. Love these. They're one of my all-time favorite lashes. Um, oh, lips. I did the Mac and Patrick Star collab. This is in Shibeta Work. It's a really light pale pink. This is how I came up with this combo. Really light pale pink, right? Like super nice, light, great, love it. I really liked the shade, but I wanted it to be glossy and just a tiny bit darker. Well, then I saw this is the Becca and Chrissy Teigen collab in glow gloss. I love this gloss so much, but it's so much darker than what I wanted. So I put the two together and I got like the perfect semi-light, semi-mauve glossy lip and it worked out absolutely fantastic. So anyways, I think that that's everything on my face. Now let's go ahead and chit chat about this palette a little bit because I definitely have some thoughts here. So I went through and as I was finishing up my eye look, doing this eye, whatever, I wanted to experiment and I started using some different colors. So if the tones look a little bit off, it is not my camera. It's that I really did use a couple different colors. So, I, cause I really wanted to go through and like get a feel for as many like textures and f like things together as I could for this. And here's what I think about this palette. 
first of all, I think it is amazing. I think everything blends out fantastic. The mattes blend out like a dream. I personally am really impressed and love these pearl shimmer shades in here. I think those things are so beautiful, so reflective. They go on like a dream. And I don't know, like, I can't speak to the specialness of having these little white pearl dots on them. I personally think that's more of like a aesthetic when you look at the palette kind of feature. But as far as the palette itself and how they perform, they perform just like any other semi-flaky, really like slippery shade. They feel in like, if you just put your finger on them, they feel a lot like the Stila Heaven's Hue highlights, how those are very like kind of squishy and almost like solidly emollient, if that makes sense, but super reflective. That's the same kind of feel I get from these. Um, but they are super beautiful. They worked great on the eyes. I loved them with those little um, sponge things from BH Cosmetics, those S1 and S2 brushes. I will make sure that I leave those in the description box. Those were so good with this palette. So if you pick it up and you don't like using your fingers like I do, I definitely could suggest those. They worked great. Here is the T. I personally really love this palette. I think like, I, I review a lot of palettes on my channel. I go through a lot of makeup in general and it is rare for me to look at a palette and go, I will leave that out because I love it that much. For me, that is this palette. This is a beautiful everyday mauve berry tone and I am so drawn to not just the tones of this palette but all the different textures. Now, for some people, that's what's turning them away from it. Like straight up, they hate it. They're like, this is garbage and they don't love having all these different textures and these feelings and these glitters and they don't like that and that's okay. If you prefer a more like, you know, like regular matte, regular shimmer kind of palette, I do think that there's lots of other options for you out there. And actually, let me go ahead and I will grab the Urban Decay Cherry and that Norvina palette. I will be right back. Hold on one second. Okay, so first up we have the little cherry palette here right next to the Huda Beauty palette. We can definitely see, let me cover up that mirror here, we can definitely see a lot of the same, very similar tones, a lot of those more like hot pink hot purple vibes but again this is a much more like traditional quote-unquote palette where you get like the full spectrum of color which is great but a lot less texture so here is the Norvina palette right next to the Huda palette as well this one in my opinion is a lot closer it has a little bit more like texture to it as well as a lot of the same tones that you see in the Huda palette um, a lot more of like the you get some purples and you get some light browns and you get you know this other color Da, 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 da. I feel like that's very similar to what you see in the Huda, whereas with the Cherry palette, it's a lot more um, straight up like pinks and like really bright pinks and like a couple purples, one deeper brown, but for the most part, it's really in that pink spectrum. And then Huda and Norvina have like purple, they have pink, they have like warm, a little cool. They have a lot more option to it. Um, the main difference, of course, though, being that the Norvina kind of did this whole row of shimmer and then a whole row of mattes on the bottom. Different colors, different everything like that, a lot of different textures, but very similar. So I think the real question here is if you have these other palettes, do you need them? I think that if it was the Urban Decay Cherry, I would say yes, just because I don't consider these two to be super duper the same. They're similar depending on what shade you're gonna reach for. Um, but it, like for me, for example, my personal opinion is I would reach for the Huda overreaching for this Urban Decay one just because I love all the textures and the different colors and the different purples and having the pinks and the purples all together in this palette where they're not so much in this palette. That for me is really a game changer. As you guys saw when I was going in and doing my upper lid on camera, one of my favorite things to do is like meld the pinks with the purples. And I just love where the world where those two kind of come together and create like a deep smoky plummy purple pink. Like I love that world. Now one of my only issues with this palette is the pan size. I'm kind of bummed out. These are 0.04 a piece. And for the price tag, I was really hoping that they would be at least 0.05. However, you guys know I also so normally use the um, Urban Decay as a standard 0.05, but even these are 0.038. So these are right around the same exact pan size that you see in the Huda as well. Obviously they're a different shape, but for me, like at the beginning, the end, the whatever, I personally feel like this new nude palette, is it something we've seen before? Yes. Do you probably have these colors elsewhere? Yes. 
I love this compilation. I love this palette. I love everything about this, from the packaging to the presentation to the way that these colors are in here. Um, I like, I, at first I was a little bit torn about the way that they're arranged because I was like, these seem very haphazard. They're just kind of thrown in here. But when you look at it, you can actually see kind of a gradient shift across the palette of lighter to like middle to deep skin tones as you move across. I think that that's really beautiful as well, just like another thing you can kind of look at. And then the way that the tones are a little bit more segmented I think is beautiful. Like having a couple of these lighter tones in the top and then deepen it up. And then just like on the bottom, these are the much more like deep sultry tones. On the bottom you have a lot more of the neutral tones, a lot more base and crease tones. Like it's things like that that I kind of look for aesthetically. And I feel like I look at this palette and I'm like overwhelmed with things that I could do and like different eye looks and different this and that and oh my god. And my eye dances when I look at this palette. And I remember my art teacher in high school telling me that real art and real beauty will make your eye dance. It'll make your eye go, oh my god, like I don't know what to look at first. And when I look at this palette, that is what I see. So anyways, you guys, the long and short of it is that this palette, it makes my eye dance. It does. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I am so drawn to this, and I don't know if it's just because I love the compilation of the pinks and the purples together. I don't know what it is. I just love the texture and the fun and like the, the visual things. Like you eat with your eyes first. That's what they always say about all food and all that kind of stuff. And for me, like I feel like when I look at this, I'm so satisfied before I even put it on my lids. I love it. Now, if you're wondering what is on my lower lash line, super quick, I will tell you. I actually dove into the shade Raw. I smudged that under there really light, keeping most of it toward the outer V. I went in also with the shade Secret, and I ran that underneath of Raw to just kind of diffuse it a little bit. Underneath of that, I went in with the shade Play to run everything out together. And then I took a flat liner brush, and I took the shade Love Bite, that deep purple, and I ran that right up next to that lower lash line just to give it like a nice deep sultry color and then I actually fun fact in the lower waterline I put the Marc Jacobs pencil in the shade Pop Euler, and I ran that just in the lower one. I put a black perversion in the top one, but you know, that one doesn't matter. This is the fun one, and it was pink, and it is so perfect. I love the Marc Jacobs highlighters. So, anyways, you guys, that is everything. I apologize that this was so, 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 so long. I hope that you guys really liked it. I know that you guys were so excited for this palette, and so was I, and I love how much I love it. So, I will definitely keep you guys updated in a product updates video, like I do with all of my stuff. Now, if you are new here, here, go down, leave a comment, tell me, hey, what's up? How's it going? Also, don't forget to check out my Instagram and my Twitter, which are both down in the description box. And do not forget to subscribe, you guys, because I am here Monday through Friday. That is five days a week with a new video. They go up bright and early my time, which is 6 a.m., and I'm in northern Michigan, so that's as early as like 3 a.m. out in California. You guys, it is a good lit time. Monday, we always do something fun. We hang out, we cook, we do something lifestyle related. And then Tuesday through Friday, we put out makeup, new reviews, new this, new that, favorites, get ready with me's. We run the gamut over here, you guys. So if you are new, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And for all of you that are normally here, thank you as well, because you guys mean so, so much to me. So you guys, I hope you all have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, honey, honey, no, 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 no. You are my good nigga. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige. Oh, wax on, wax off. Yes, Mr. Miyagi-san. Yes. You got it. Obviously, there are a ton of Huda Beauty. This palette really... Wait, what? I still hated all of that. I need to do a new intro because I hated that. I am praying that this is going to like... <laughs> Seriously, I feel like I've never filmed a video in my entire life before. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I can't. I can't. Fuck. Stop, Paige. It's not funny. Your failure is not funny. Stop laughing. This is not a funny moment. Mm -hmm. Can you see the sparkle in my eye? Oh my god, I can, and it's gorgeous. Gorgeous.